I'm Frederick Hagen. I'm the director of the Critical Threats Project at the American Enterprise Institute. Um, and we are partnered with the Institute for the Study of War, uh, both national security think tanks in Washington, DC. We do open source intelligence. Uh, so we mine the internet and social media um, and produce uh, intelligence analysis based on a rigorously cultivated data set uh, that allows us to generate insights to explain to policymakers and the media and the public what's going on in conflict areas around the world. Uh, that also supports policy recommendations, which we make um, periodically, and planning exercises that we engage in periodically uh, based on the forecasting that we're able to do using this information in order to offer policymakers possible future strategies, courses of action, uh, ways to solve problems that are going on in the world. We have a very highly cultivated data set of events and uh, entities, being, uh, people and places and things and, and that sort of thing, and the relationships to one another based on the data that we pull from the internet and from social media. Um, that database, its integrity and our ability to access it, visualize it and traverse it are central to our ability to perform our analysis and forecasting and derive insight from our information. We use Neo4j as the backbone for the information system um, in which that data resides. And we chose Neo4j for a number of reasons, um, but principally because we think that the graph database is the right model for intelligence, the intelligence community, for any kind of intelligence organization moving forward. And we think that Neo4j has the best uh, database, uh, graph database structure that's out there. One of the problems that we have is that we are operating um, extensively in unstructured data. The team is going out and just reading articles and so forth in local media, and we need to bring that into a database. But we also interact with a lot of structured databases uh, provided by various non-governmental organizations or governmental organizations or so forth, or other people who are doing the same thing as us. All of the data comes in different structures. And we had legacy data from another system that was in still another structure. We've learned that it's very important to give analysts a single uh, graphical user interface by which to interact with their data. The more clicks you put between a user and insight, the less insight you actually get and the more users run away from a tool. So being able to bring all of those disparate data sources together in a single place and have the users interact with them seamlessly is vital. The graph technology that NEO has makes that very, very easy in a way that traditional SQL type databases make it very, very hard. And the key to this is that NEO allows you to have multiple overlapping ontologies coexisting simultaneously in the same data set without degrading performance. And so, whereas in a traditional sort of SQL type database, if you have a new data structure, or even if you just want to add a new kind of property, you have to add it and then you have to re-index all of the tables and all the join tables and all of that kind of stuff. With Neo, you don't have to do any of that. And fun, basically, you add a new label or a new set of labels and you bring it straight in. And I've done that repeatedly. And it's been very easy. And so it means that actually getting the data into the database is the easy part. And the only part that I've then had to deal with a little bit is how to present it on the front end to the user, given that it's in a slightly different structure. But the ability to munge data like that um, is incredibly important for the kind of work we do. In addition to that, we are operating in a very dynamic environment. We are exploring how to do what it is that we do. We're very worth thinking about it all the time. And we're coming up with new ideas for how to organize our data, for how to categorize it, for how to arrange it, for how to make links and so forth. And so having the ability to change the ontology that we're using on the fly and in a way that's transparent to the user and doesn't require taking databases offline or index, re-indexing or anything like that is incredibly important to sustaining the dynamism of our own development of our tech stack and of our analytical workflow and processes. I think graph technology is really the ideal technology for the backbone for uh, intelligence analytical systems. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is 
because of the, the ease with which it supports data munching and bringing together lots of different uh, data sources, which is a huge problem in the intelligence community and generally. Um, the other, of course, is because we are interested in all intelligence organizations, whether they're business or uh, uh, government, are interested in seeing network connections and traversing networks. And that is, of course, the thing that Graph usually sells, and it's the most obvious thing, and of course, it's quite valid. Um, and I have interacted with other systems that um, laid what looked like a graph kind of GUI on top of a SQL kind of a database. And then I have used Neo to do similar things. And it is unquestionably the case that you have much better performance when you're doing graph traversals and when you're reaching out to different degrees of separation with an actual true graph database versus a single SQL database that is presenting you with a graph-like GUI. Um, and since you know, understanding network diagramming and understanding network relationships and traversing graphs rapidly is going to continue to be a huge problem for the intelligence community and all of us, I think that graph is the natural place where um, the community should migrate to. I came to the task of writing this, uh, developing the software that we use in a really kind of a strange way. I'm a hobbyist programmer. Uh, I've never taken a computer science course. My college appreciation job years ago was writing Fortran 77 code, which probably you don't even remember what it is, um, for a geophysicist. Um, I picked up Python a few years ago um, because I thought that it would be helpful. And then I found myself for various reasons having to write uh, code that would allow us to interact with a uh, data set and bring that data set into something. So I decided to bring it into Neo. To my amazement, the learning how to use Neo, learning how to get the data into Neo, learning how to write cipher queries was the easy part. All the other stuff that I had to do was the hard part. But I found Neo to be an incredibly user-friendly um, interface and Cypher to be an incredibly user-friendly and intuitive way of interacting with the data um, that made it super easy for me to, as a novice programmer basically, to bring our data into this data structure and then start interacting with it. And I've also found Neo to be incredibly reliable, um, which is good because I have, I'm the back-end engineer as well. Um, and I've had to do virtually nothing to maintain a healthy data set now for more than a year, uh, used by, at any given time, by 40 or 50 analysts, um, with now I don't know, eight or nine million nodes, and nodes in it of different types. And it's been incredibly stable and incredibly reliable with very, very little maintenance. So from all of those perspectives, as a tool for someone who's relatively inexperienced uh, to work with, Neo has been a dream. We were so excited, in fact, about uh, Neo and how we were using it for our back end that when we had to redesign our website, uh, we talked with the vendor who was working on that uh, for us, um, and we persuaded them, and it wasn't that hard, to use Neo as the back end for the website. Um, and so instead of using the kind of traditional WordPress, you know, SQL kind of uh, back end data store on the website, we're actually running a Neo uh, database behind the website. Um, that is also going to facilitate the integration of our research uh, data directly into things that are, you know, can be visualized on the website. Um, and it's a great, it's actually, I think, a really good backbone for a website because the, the relational aspect of it, the funny thing is, right, the one thing that a relational database isn't is relational in the sense that we, when we talk about graph relationships. And so um, I think it's our, the, uh, Part of the company that did our website was very excited about learning how to use Neo and bringing it into the website. And I think that that's another application that also uh, has a lot of interest. In.